Hey, what's going on guys? JST Sense here, and today we're gonna bring you another video about a graphics card. I've finally gotten my hands on EVGA's GeForce GTX 980 SC ACX 2.0 graphics card. I'm gonna need oxygen to get through this video. As you guys know, back on September 18th, NVIDIA launched its next-gen graphics card on the Maxwell platform with the 980 and the 970. Now, we've already taken a look at the 970, and as you guys know, I'm really fond of EVGA, and it's taken a while to get this card in my hand, but we are taking a look at the ACX 2.0 version of the GTX 980. Now, this is EVGA's custom cooler, and obviously, as the name would pretty much indicate, it is version 2.0 of their original ACX cooler right here. Now, without putting you guys to sleep, I'm not going to bore you when it comes to a lot of the specs on this. In fact, it does feature a 1380 megahertz uh, boost clock. In fact, in my testing that I have already performed on this card, I was able to actually reach 1494 megahertz. That's pretty good. Couldn't jump into the, into the deep 1500 megahertz range like I was hoping, but still you can't really complain about being just under 1500 megahertz. Now for IO, it has one DVI port, three display port, and one HDMI. I would have liked to have seen another DVI, but hey, I guess everything's starting to move towards display port, especially with 4K becoming so much more affordable. Now one thing I want to focus on in this video today is a little bit more about the cooler itself because that's really what the star of the show is today. We'll talk about benchmark numbers, but we'll put those up a little bit later. Now, as you guys may notice, the fans clearly look a little bit different. In fact, at first glance, you might think that it was actually pulling air through the card and exhausting it out the fan, but that's not the case. In fact, EVJ has decided to give something a shot here by having backwards spinning fans, and it's actually gonna be more or less spreading the air out and pushing it using the smooth edge of the fan blade rather than the blade edge of the fan blade to kind of give it a, bit, a little bit better noise signature, a little bit less noise volume, and hopefully decent cooling. Now when it comes to the heat pipes and stuff, it pretty much features the exact same thing as the ACX 1.0, but it does also have a little bit beefier block uh, that is actually a heat sink on top of the, the heat pipes where it goes from each side of the, bay, of the heat sink there. In fact, on this one, if you look inside, we'll, we'll show a close up, there is no heat sink on that bridge of heat pipe, if you will. Now, one thing I am disappointed to see is that they did not include a back plate. Now, I did inquire about this with them for this review. They did say that back plates will be available later, but as a separate add-on or separate purchase that you could install onto your card. Uh, they did that with the 600 series and the 680s and 670s, if you recall. But I, I don't really like that idea because one, it means the user then has to take off the screws and install it themselves. And a lot of people may not be comfortable with that. And two, there's a lot of other brands that are already including them with their cards, which is a decent selling point. It's a lot nicer and more attractive to look at a backplate than it is to look at a bare PCB. And not only that, the bare PCB tends to be a pretty because of the rough texture, it tends to be a pretty decent dust magnet where backplates are a lot safer to wipe with a, you know, an electrostatic brush or you know, an electronics brush. So I don't know, I, I'm, I wish there was a backplate on this, but you know, what can you do? Now the ACX 2.0 also features LED lighting, which the ACX 1.0 did not. And it does work with all of your GeForce Experience LED controls and it, it's actually pretty nice to be able to go in here and adjust the brightness and whatnot. It would have been awesome if it was RGB and maybe they could have included that with their own precision tuning software, but maybe in the future. RGB is kind of the thing now with all the different builds and RGB keyboards, that would have been a nice feature to see. So hopefully in the future, we'll see something like that. I mean, even the little SC logo here on the back lights up, which is really cool. So guys, let's go ahead and get this inside and let's see how the performance numbers actually are. Transition!
All right, so as you guys can see, I went ahead and included a few extra titles. I asked you guys in my Skunk Works video, the three-way performance video, what titles you guys wanted to see me do benchmarks on. And you guys overwhelmingly said, Shadow of Mordor! So I went ahead and did that. And a huge thanks to Ryan Valley on Twitter for providing me with that key. Huge thank you, buddy. I was able to include that in this video because of that key. Now, I just want to comment real quick on Shadow of Mordor. I did not, a couple of things actually, I did not use the HD texture pack because one, I, I want to do a separate video on the HD texture pack and sort of round up a few cards and see how it's kind of hammering those cards uh, when it comes to VRAM. So I didn't want to just do the 980 ACX 2.0 performance on it. I will include the 980 ACX 2.0 in that video. So don't worry, we will circle back to that. Now this card is absolutely overkill for 1080p, like beyond overkill. It's not meant for 1080p, it's, it's designed to be a little bit more future-proof when it comes to 4K becoming more mainstream and affordable. Now I wanna go ahead and talk about DSR for a second here. Now I did turn it on and I did try it in a few games, but you know, I wanted to go ahead and do performance on native resolution. I'm looking at buying a new panel in the future, perhaps a 4K panel just for benchmarking. And, you know, I, I saw some benefit to it. Some things looked really, really clear. Obviously, performance was hit hard when you trick the system into thinking you have a 4K panel going. In fact, I don't know, maybe the performance was right where it would have been with 4K, but I noticed a little bit of glitchiness in there, at least in my setup. Now, I did run MSAA at max on all of these. The new, uh, the new MFAA, is not really ready yet when it comes to the 980. In fact, the 970 is also not ready yet. It's a future update coming to Maxwell cards. So what do you guys think about this card? The ACX 2.0, fantastic cooler. It actually works really, really well. Temperatures never exceeded 67 degrees Celsius while overclocked in a room right now that's sitting at about 80 degrees. So it was actually pretty impressive when it came to keeping temperatures nice and low. So guys, this has been the EVGA GTX 980 SC ACX 2.0. I think card manufacturers are starting to want to see who has the longest name. At least it's starting to feel that way. But anyway, that reverse pretty much is just a backwards fan, seems to work pretty well, and the noise signature of the card is way different than the ACX 1.0 and it's actually a lot easier on the ears. It's a lot less choppy sounding and it's much more smoother, more of a kind of a mellow whirring, if you will. In fact, I, I didn't find it obtrus intrusive or obnoxious to listen to whatsoever. And in fact, uh, I did include ramping up the fan profile to where the fan would go up to 40%. In fact, in all of these tests, overclocked, 68 degrees Celsius-ish, right around there, bounced around a little bit between 67 and 68, was all at 40% fan speed. We've reached the point here, guys, where you reach your max overclocks on your card well before you hit your thermal limit, and that's a big deal. Guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. Follow on Twitter if you have any questions. Hope you get my hand on a few more of these, if you guys know what I mean. Anyways, see you on that social media, guys, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. This is the first video of mine you've ever seen. That'd be, that would be awesome, too. See you next time.